again, everyone. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, the donations for NAMI. Uh, so I'm going to get Kaizo Mario 3 started here. And uh, so uh, for those not familiar with this version of the game, it's basically the same game engine as Super Mario Brothers 3, um, but rearranged, uh, which is one of the uh, translations of uh, Kaizo, apparently a uh, Japanese word, I believe. Um, and uh, it's rearranged to make it very difficult. Uh, and so I'm gonna do some jumps here to get over this extremely high pipe, uh, which was what got me started on this run uh, because this whole game is designed so that you're only supposed to be able to finish each level small. Um, and so I wanted to see if I could get through that first level big, um, which was possible with a huge array of glitches. I'm gonna carry the shell here with me, which uh, is not done RTA, I don't believe, because uh, you can't get under that pipe um, and past all the Goombas. And uh, using that shell uh, enables me to stay in the air a lot longer and wind up getting over that pipe at the end. Uh, and hopping through very quickly. Uh, so again, we would normally have to be small here by the game design. Uh, we're big, which actually, um, we have Karibo Shoe now, which can do limited air jumps, and there it goes. Uh, and having the leaf, we're able to get up and fly over this level. I'm glad uh, this run doesn't have too many pure flyovers, um, which can you know, be a less entertaining, somewhat cheesy way to skip things with a task, potentially, uh, where we can fly. Uh, but I do kind of like that um, flying through that level. Um, we weren't really flying, we are gliding down uh, for better speed and having to bounce off the uh, Lakitus occasionally. So this level is uh, has a lot of intricate jumps. Um, the time limiting factor for a lot of these is just getting to some of these mo moving platforms on the first possible frame and starting them, and then uh, finally getting here to where we're able to bounce off your shells and glide uh, to platform through the rest of the level with uh, skipping some of the uh, moving platform challenges. And you can definitely see the, uh, the level of difficulty here um, is much higher than typical Super Mario Brothers 3. Um, and of course, with the task, we have as many re-records as we want. Um, and uh, so I tried to make use of that here and in this scene to do a lot of very risky jumps and uh, wall jumps and things that require a great deal of precision and uh, would be extremely risky uh, if you were playing real time. And as is mentioned in the chat, this uh, ROM hack, uh, which I was very impressed with, was made by uh, Obidus, who has unfortunately passed away. All right, this is our first uh, bullet bill manipulation level. Just getting the bullet bills to fire quickly is key, so we're limited by uh, how soon it fires and how uh, fast it can travel. And a little wall jump there lets us uh, not have to wait for those bullet bills. Yeah, it's funny how those cheap cheeps just fall out of the sky there, but I actually jump off of one of them to uh, get up to the frog suit more quickly. And the frog suit is strange in that um, uh, it actually accelerates faster than the regular Mario suits. And um, even though the frog suit can swim very fast, it's still fast. It's still faster to uh, continuously porpoise out of the water like that. 
And um, fun fact, the frog suit, because of its acceleration, uh, can actually do non-P-speed running uh, or walking a, a tiny bit faster than non-frog suit Mario, a speed of 41 subpixels per frame uh, rather than 40 for running uh, because of the faster acceleration. The fun little level, um, the little skip here. Uh, you have to be small Mario to be able to continuously wall jump off the same wall uh, because of the clipping. Um, uh, so small Mario can do wall jumps at much lower speeds than big Mario. I'm on a lag there, but uh, this is one of my favorite levels. We're actually going to carry the shell a very long way. It's going to try and wake up on us, so we'll have to actually throw it and stomp it up here to avoid it waking up and killing us. Then we grab it again, and we keep carrying it. And also, we can do that little jump there. Um, and I don't know if anyone else calls that, but um, one of my task partners from way back when, Andy Mack, uh, called that uh, the Shell Ninja Strat, where you uh, throw a shell and then boost off it yourself. Uh, so I've always just called it that. Uh, one of my favorite strats. And notice a lot of these big blocks are, um, uh, are not usable anymore. Uh, there's an odd little feature of the game where if you don't die, then from level to level, uh, depending on where the big blocks are located, uh, they won't be active again after you use them. Even if you didn't use that block in that particular level, if you used one in the same part of a different level, then it won't be visible if you haven't died. Uh, so since we're completing the game without dying, we actually have to take very careful account of that uh, in terms of which suits we keep available when, which is especially important uh, later in Bowser's Castle. Uh, where you're supposed to grab a bunch of suits, um, but I believe we only grabbed the Tanuki because that's the only one that's left. All right, speaking of Tanuki, uh, this little strat is one of my favorites um, just because it's a little bit silly showing off the statue at the end here. Um, and uh, th that womp kill was just kind of for fun. But you'll see at the end, um, again, you're supposed to have to be small to finish each level. Um, but by keeping this suit, doing the little statue trick there to get into this pipe, where ordinarily we would have been damaged, um, that enables a really big skip in the next level. Kill that guy. Just out of spite. And now some clips here. Ordinarily, we would have to actually ride on the flying creatures uh, and uh, stay above spikes, uh, which uh, takes a very long time. But by taking damage twice, uh, able to get through there. And then this is one of my favorite strats. The, you have to do frame-perfect jumps off of each of those P-switches. Otherwise, since everything's coins, you would... Uh, fall down into the pit, of course, which is one of the many traps that the uh, ROM hack author threw in the game. This level's got some good platforming. A lot of fun to uh, pass these and get them as quickly as possible. Uh, also, a lot of lag reduction. that pipe to avoid having to take damage. And 
yeah, so this, uh, you can see there's a moving platform there. You're supposed to delay getting the star and ride around on the moving platform. Uh, but because we have, uh, we entered with Fire Mario, we can take damage twice um, and avoid having to ride on the moving platform at all, uh, which is obviously a big time saving. Okay, some wall jumps here to save some platforming. And I did try skipping that star there, uh, but you can't escape the thwomps. They're just a little bit too quick. Got our little walking candle flames here. It's another fun little bit of platforming. Little challenge to get the leaf here, keep P speed. Uh, and get as quickly as possible over. And here, uh, we're gonna avoid a whole section uh, where you had to go down on that last screen by doing a little clip here. Normally you would need fire to get uh, down to that pipe, which would require uh, doing a big drop on that screen earlier. Yeah, so, um, and uh, someone in chat was mentioning the uh, the P-switch, uh, if you hit it um, by moving precisely on the right sub-pixel for just one frame, uh, then you can activate a P-switch and have it not going away. A little pipe glitch there, necessary actually, because uh, we're not small, uh, to get into the pipe, uh, which of course, it's very well known at this point, Super Mario Brothers 3. Uh, but if you're off the edge of the pipe, then um, standing just off the edge of the pipe, then the game thinks you're uh, on a pipe entry. Um, and so you can trick it into letting you in. This is one of my favorite little uh, platform scenes here, although I guess there's no platforms, just Koopas. Um, anytime you can avoid having to wait for moving platforms, uh, save a lot of time. So being able to take damage there and uh, use wall jumps to get up uh, makes it a lot faster. All right. So this uh, entertainment wise uh, is one of my favorite little bits coming up. Um, so we got to get use these bullet bills to get past here, get the leaf, and now we're gonna have to ride on a big stack of bullet bills. And uh, actually manipulation was done in the previous level and this level too, uh, to be able to get each frame, one of the bullet, or the three center bullet bills actually uh, go forward by one pixel um, every other frame compared to the top ones. And that's what lets me kill the middle ones first and it's fastest to save the top one for last uh, because you take the final jump um, from a higher position and therefore you can take the final jump earlier and accelerate away from the bullet bills. All right, the devious spike tunnels here in the final fortress and you see there's uh, no suit, none of the giant question blocks are available for us. Uh, which requires us to do some uh, ball jumping to get through. You'll see I'm able to maintain P-speed uh, up that giant wall jump uh, by using a little strat to uh, do a, a um, bigger than average uh, wall jump embedding myself in the wall. This part here is actually performed pretty much uh, as designed by the game writer. And we've got our fire suit ready for the final boss. And the big thing here is just manipulating Bowser to take a bunch of small, ju small jumps so we can kill him uh, before he takes a big jump and uh, make him drop off screen quickly and end the game faster.
And there we go. Thank you, Tampa. And yes, I may have used some safe states, so no swag for me. Thank you all for watching. Uh, I really enjoyed making this task. Um, just all the platforming challenges and uh, trying to avoid uh, having to take damage and trying to finish levels where possible, but still some upgrades um, made it really interesting. And it's one of those runs where, uh, you know, it's short, it's interesting. Uh, every now and then I'll just kind of um, go back and watch a level and then find myself watching the rest of it too. So and I'm, I'm glad uh, other people seem to enjoy it as well. And uh, if you have a chance to check out some of the RTA world records and uh, personal bests, etc., on this title, uh, it's really astounding. A lot of the strats that I use here um, to various degrees can be performed RTA. And, um, uh, and so there are some really impressive, incredibly impressive results uh, that have been obtained.